following video demonstrates some of the simple but yet powerful surface design functionality within Enforce. If I look at this topsoil model, we can see that we have a, an OGL survey in here already. We obviously don't want to remove any material from site because that costs money. Um, we're going to assume that we need to find an additional 6,000 cubic meters of material because uh, that's going to be left over after the uh, excavation of the houses. So essentially we need a new surface here which is going to be graded to allow for drainage but also that requires an additional 6,000 cubic meters of uh, material. So start with, I've got a design model here which is the boundary we can't go outside. So our surface design must work inside this and we also have a surface that I've called plane which is in fact just four points inserted at a, a rough gradient through the site about halfway running at a rough fall of 1 in 30. So if you look at our design string you can see at the moment there are no heights. So if I go to camera on that I also need to densify this string because this is going to be our starting point which we're going to batter to or rather up and down from to that plane and we need more points along it so that we actually pick up both the ground model as it stands at the moment and the plane more accurately. So I'll start by going to features and coming down to densify and choose all. Click the feature. And the most accurate way of picking up the original surface would be to DTM by DTM facet edges because then we would only get a point on the string where it crossed a triangle in the underlying model. But that could create points at very irregular intervals which isn't going to be much use to us. So I'm going to say at maximum distance uh, no further than 5 meters. If I press OK we get all those new points automatically added for us. Still no heights though, so to do that, I change my pick motor rectangle and go to points, move to DTM. Wants to know which model, obviously, so I pick the uh, the top side model. I'm going to move all of them, all the points, press OK, and then select everything. And as you can see, the height annotation is now kicking in, and we have levels on those points. So I turn those levels off by pressing Alt and F9. I'm taking heights because they're going to get in the way. There's our string. If I go to the 3D view, you can see we now have a, a string that sits on the top cell. So to begin with, we obviously need to know whether the plane that we've got to play with at the moment is uh, above or below or even at the right height. So I go to Features and select Batter. I'm going to batter my boundary string and I want it inside. And I'm going to assume that we're going to batter up and down at 1 and 2 and we're going to get the software to calculate the batter slopes for us automatically. I want to batter to the plane surface and I'll give it the code TB for top of batter even though it's perhaps going to be a bottom batter in some cases and we're going to go all the way I'm going to try and remove the cups as best we can. Okay, so that's been done for us. In some situations the features are just too difficult to remove the cups, so we've got to do that last bit manually. So go points, delete in element mode I'll just delete these points. That's that little area. And this one down here. And I think there might be one in the corner here too. And one tidy there. Okay, so having done that, go DTM, create normal. Okay, now we've got the automatic height shading turned on, so I'll turn that off by using Alt F9 again. And now I've got some triangles that I need to tidy up, so we can do that by going DTM, Edit, and Delete by Feature, Outside. Click the external string, and there we go, triangles are trimmed automatically. So, having got our surface now, we now need to know what sort of quantities this requires. So obviously we're looking for a net uh, additional requirement of 6,000 cubic meters. So I go to DTM, come down to volumes by prisms, the projected surface, and I don't want to plot the table, but I do want to plot, or rather, I do want to swap the cut and the fill because I'm actually on the design at the moment. And I'm going to work my volumes out and compare them to the original topsoil model. Press OK. OK, so at the moment we can see that we're actually um, cutting more than we're filling by by 1,400 cubic meters. So we do in fact need to raise the plane by quite a large amount in order to get the necessary additional fill that's required or rather that we require. So I'll delete the DTM, delete this string 
Okay, so I need to rebatter that string, but I need to rebatter it to the plane once it's been moved up by a certain interval. So if I go back to the project manager, click the surface, uh, click the plane model, sorry, select the heights column, right click and come down to height and choose offset. So I'm going to start by saying 0.1. So I'm basically adding 0.1 of a meter onto all of these points here. Press OK to that. I can now switch back to my design, rebatter it, change the point number back to 1. Everything's as I left it otherwise. Press OK. Delete these points. Okay, create the DTM again. Delete those edge triangles that I don't want. And do the quantities. Okay, so we can see now we've jumped from having uh, a more cut than we did fill to now having substantially more fill. We've obviously still got to go up a little way though. We're only just up to just over three and a half thousand. We need six. So I've got to repeat the process again. So I added uh, point 0.1 to it. So I'll try adding an additional point, point zero 0.04 say. Back to the design, rebatter it. Press OK. Delete the additional points as before. Every time we do it, we get a slightly different result, obviously. the DTM, trim the triangles again, and run the volume. Okay, so we can see I'm almost now, I'm almost there, 5,911. Obviously I could repeat the process again and again and again, getting it more and more accurate, but I think you get the idea. So we'll assume for the moment then that we are within our tolerance. What I need now to do is to plot the cut and the fill boundary between the two. So I'm going to turn the triangles off because that's going to get in the way. And also the contours. So we're just left with the original strings. And to shade the cut and the fill, I go to the tools menu, come down to crosshatch and choose cut and fill. Okay, so we select a, a colour for our cut area and our fill area, the layer it goes on, and the hatch style. We have obviously the standard AutoCAD uh, hatch styles that are available, but I tend to use NC31 or other the diagonal lines because it allows you to see through them quite well. If I press OK, I'm also going to swap the cut and the fill over, otherwise what I thought would be green would, uh, what I thought would be cut would in fact be fill. If I press OK, obviously I have to select the same surface that I did the original volumes to click anywhere on the screen and then we can now see a cut and fill boundary. So we now know where the areas of cut and fill are but we don't actually know how deep they are. So we'll finish off by creating what's called an isopachite surface or a height difference surface where we can actually plot the contours on that and that will actually tell us the various depths of cut and fill that we are in fact going to encounter. So if I 